Yeah, they, uh, it doesn't matter who's spawn, who my spawn partners is. I would just say, all right, I go on Facebook and say, these are my spawn partners. These, these, you know, it's, it's what I ex extract from the spawn partners. That's what's going to count. Fred, Fred, Fred is acting like he got the ball in hand, but I, I, I think that Brian's going to be exposed as a green fighter in this fight, I think, my opinion. He might be undefeated, but, you know, I think he's going to be get exposed in this fight. When it comes down to athleticism and technical ability, he's going to get exposed by a better fighter. Because Klitschko is uh, relaxed. He's gamed. He's ready to go. He wants to go. You know, so. I don't think that he's going to come in with anything special. You know. Anything could happen in a fight. But uh, the likelihood against Vladimir Klitschko, you know, you got people going around saying that this is the end of his reign. And, I mean, he's... At 17 title defenses, 17. That's a lot of title defenses. So he's been there. He's been here before. He's done it. He's but done it, it. if Jennings is to pull off the upset, then it will be a monumental upset, would it not? It'll be it'll be equal to Buster Douglas. It'll be but equal to Buster Douglas beating Mike Tyson. You know. But then the credit it would be the fact that Klitschko came in his best condition. He trained very well. There was no problems in camp. I mean, yeah, yeah, of course. It, it, but all that, that's, that would be irrelevant. The fact of the matter is that he would have beaten a great champion in Vladimir Klitschko. You know, he would have beaten a great champion in Vladimir Klitschko. And that, that would be a monumental upset. You know, but I, I think that uh, it won't happen. I think when Vladimir start dropping these bombs on me and to get into a fight, he's going to hurt him bad. Bad. I think he's going to hurt Brian bad. I just hope he doesn't get hurt really bad. But he's going to he's going to be, you know, he's going to be in a serious fight. They say they train people tough in Philly. Is that true? Is that a myth? They don't train people no more tougher in Philly than they do in Detroit. But all the all those gym wars that they had, their gym uh, Philadelphia have a reputation for having gym wars. To me, that's that's neither here nor there. I would not train my fighters. I wouldn't put my fighters into a tough environment where they were constantly battling in gym wars. You know, I mean, a gym war here and there to keep a guy on his toes is all right. But when you have a gym war, every time you show up in a gym, it, it has a way of taking its toll on the boxer. And uh, it takes a little portion of his career away from him and maybe uh, make him exit the sport prematurely. Because those gym wars has a way of wearing out the boxer. Would you say David Reed was one of those fighters then? Uh, David Reed, Reed was... Uh, he was in some tough fights. He's in Philadelphia. And then he had the, the eye problem that made them accelerate his career. You know? They made him accelerate his career. You know, so... You can't really say what the case was, but I think that his eye, the problem he had with his eye made him vulnerable. Yep. And they speeded up things, and they speeded up mm -hmm. the process with him. Okay, let's, 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 let's talk about how this fight, how you think this fight... In your mind, as a trainer, breaks down. The first round, okay? The two guys get to set in the ring. They touch gloves. Klitsch goes in his corner. Bryant's in his corner. Or Jennings in his corner. Ding, ding. Round one. The guys come together. I think, I think that Brian's going to come out and try to jump on Latimer. I think he's going to try to uh, work angles. Right. You know, sort of like, like I said, like sort of like with Evander Holyfield fought bow. Mm -hmm. In and out to the side. In and not straight back, you know. He 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 probably jab the body, you know, jab the body, and then try to go over the top with right hands. Right, Klitschko. I think no. I think that Brian's going to try to go over Latimer's left hand with his right hand. Right. He'll throw 
over the top right hands and wide left hooks, trying to get find something, you know, trying to find something to hang his hat on. Okay. But I think that he, I think that 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 jab that is going to make the difference in this fight. Klitschko's jab is going to make the difference. The you eighty-four know? to eighty-one inch reach uh, with a three-inch reach advantage of Jennings. Some people say he doesn't use his 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 uh, reach good enough as a heavyweight. Your thoughts? Um, no, I, I haven't seen him use that jab the way that I thought he could use it. But like Mike Tyson said, it's not how long your jab is, is is how and when you use it. You know, it's not how long the jab is. He says how and when you use it. Because Mike effectively out jabbed a lot of guys, and his his reach was far shorter than theirs. So I think that Latimer's jab is more accurate and more punishing than uh, uh, Bryant's, you know. And Latimer, it's hard to get jabs in on Latimer because he's got this this awkward defense going on where he blocks them, you know. I think that uh, he'll keep Bryant at bay with his own jab, you know. Once he get that jab going, he'll have room to land the, 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 the right, right hand. hand. You know, but he'll get on track with that jab. Okay, uh, punching power. Don't and don't 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 dismiss the hook. Don't dismiss this hook. You know, because he's got a, a brutal hook too. Yeah, he has. We've seen that. The uppercut is a punch that might even come into play in this fight. I've never seen Klitschko yeah, use much yeah. uppercuts. Yeah, he, he yeah he he has a good uppercut. In other words, he's a he's a even handed fighter. He can punch with either hand. He can get a guy in trouble with either hand, as you saw with Povetkin. That wasn't even a hard hook that put Povetkin down that first time. That wasn't the best hook he could throw. When he hurt Samuel Peter in the first fight, with a, late in the fight, that was the 12th round he hurt him with that left hook. He hit Sam Peter with a left hook and had him in bad trouble. You know, he's a powerful puncher. And a uh, puncher power is no comparison to me. Absolutely. No comparison. But, but, so Bryant can't afford to get into a firefight because if he did, if he does get into a firefight, he'll lose it. What about a firefight on his chest? Fly fight with on Klitschko's chest. Something we don't see often. What do you mean, Bryant? The, the Bryant put the fight up on his chest, as opposed to having it here, where Klitschko's got his arms and can throw the big right hands. Nah, he, get won't, inside. he won't get, get inside it. That's a cute thing to say, but how do you get there? You know, getting to the inside of Klitschko is a very difficult task. Very, very difficult task to get on the inside. And, and then you got to worry about incoming. While you try to get on the inside, you got to worry about offensive power coming from Latimer Klitschko. That's true. So getting... So, you know, so getting on the inside is, is, is a cliche thing to think about or to say because, you know, it sounds good on, on paper, but getting on the inside is a, it's it's a tall task. It's not easy. But this is, a, this, this is an educated boxer. Vladimir Klitschko is an educated boxer. You know, no. he's a very careful boxer. The key, the key to unlocking the Klitschko... Um... Door is getting on the inside and hitting that chin. You've got to hit that chin. <laughs> You're not going to beat Vladimir Klitschko staying on the outside and looking at him. You've got to hit him on the chin. <laughs> if you don't hit, and you've got to hit him with punches and bunches, not one shot. It's going to be one, two, three, four. Because the first shot might not drop him, but you've got to hit him two or three times. You've got to hit him. <laughs> if you don't hit him, what's the point? <laughs> you, you, you may also just stay on the outside and, and just wait for the right hand to drop. Yeah, you got you got to go on the inside, but like I said, you got to worry about incoming. That's the thing. You have to. I want to get on the inside, but I got to worry about incoming. I agree. You got to take gotta, something, I, and uh, I mean Lamont Brewster, another one. He he took a heck of a beating. He took a heck of a beating. But he still he got in and he landed. Yeah. Yeah, he took a heck of a beating. <laughs> he took a heck of a beating, and then got knocked down too. Before he got out of me out of he got he took he got knocked down. You remember he's on the floor. Yeah. 
But uh, he was on a mission. That, you got to give Lehman the credit. He was on a mission that 91. He just wore that of me out. But Klitschko is a much better prepared boxer now as opposed to that time. Of course. He's much better prepared to go the distance, to go those 12 rounds. The likelihood of him getting tired is little or none. But what about you know, somebody forcing a fight with him so he's having to fight at a pace he doesn't normally fight at? Well, he's going 12 rounds every single day in the training camp. 12 rounds with four or five different people. So he's prepared. But those sp sparring sessions, have they who, been against... Who does that? Who, who does that? Uh, he, no, they, trust me, he's not in there beating people up. He's in there working. Who else brings, who else brings Deontay Wilder, Joseph Parker, Anthony Joshua, who brings those kind of people to their training camp? You won't find nobody around bringing that kind of uh, that kind of uh, caliber of boxers into the training camp. So he's looking for competition. He's looking for competition when he brings those guys in, and he's getting good work from them. And he's going those twelve rounds every day in the top spot. You don't you don't find that of me going eight rounds and. Seven rounds and ten rounds. He don't find that. He goes twelve to fifteen rounds all of the time, the whole training camp. So he's in his own way. I'm the champion, and I'm preparing like the champion. If you want to compete with me, you'll have to be able to go these rounds. Okay. And the average boxer, when they get around seven or eight, fights over because mentally they're shot. Now you're a trainer that's been around a long time. Your ears are normally to the ground, and you'll hear things from camps. Did you hear anything about? Bryant sparring or his training camp or all? No, 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 no. Didn't even inquire about it. Don't even care. Didn't even inquire about it. I probably could have found out something if I had put my ears on the ground to find out, but it didn't. It doesn't even matter to me. And I'm not underestimating Bryant. I'm not underestimating him. I just don't think that he's in the same class as Vladimir Klitschko. So that's why I'm, you know, some people could look at it and say that, you know, I'm being disrespectful to him or I'm underestimating him, but I'm not. Neither. I'm not being disrespectful and I'm not underestimating him. I just don't care who he had for a spawn partner. Okay. I so, just don't care. So what does he bring to the table? What does he bring in this fight that's a threat? Apart from two hands. His desire. On top, he seems to have the desire to win. Outwardly. But we don't know what's going on inside his chest, inside of his mind at this time. At this time right here. You know, and uh, because he's an undefeated fighter, I don't, you know, I'm not in a position to question his heart or his mentality because he's won 19 other fights. You Is know? there anything so in those I, 19 fights that you've seen that could tell you one way or another? Well, he has a pattern. I don't think he's going to be able to change in this fight. I don't think he could, he could come up with any surprises. In the Mikey Perez fight, it was more of what Mikey Perez couldn't or wouldn't do than what Bryant did. Mikey Perez seemed to have ate himself out of the position of winning that fight. But we talked about this, and I said, down the stretch, Bryant wins the fight. I said, Perez, Perez early, he'll take the early rounds. I said, late in the fight, down the stretch, Bryant runs away with the fight. But Brian didn't run away with the fight. Brian barely won that fight to me. He didn't win the fight going away. He didn't win it like, like wow, he blew him out. He didn't. But it, it, Perez it was, was holding ugly all fight. the time. Huh? Perez was holding all the time. Yeah. But Brian, Brian didn't look good in that fight. He, he didn't, didn't look good. To be honest. Hand speed. Does that matter? I think they're about even in the hand speed department. You know? It's about even in the hand speed department. You saw the sneaky left hook that allowed me to put pull up down with? You almost didn't see. They broke him. It was a clinch. They yeah. broke him. And bing, a left hook was right there and he's on the floor. Pulev seemed to have no defense to a left hook. None whatsoever. Watch out that Bryant don't get hit with it too. But he's more defensively responsible, wouldn't you say? Yeah, but not when he's punching. 
when he's trying to use his jab, when he's trying to use the right hand, he's got to watch out that he don't get hit with the left hook. Because once that left hook in, that one, once that left hook lands, fight can end, uh, you know, quickly thereafter. Do you think he's a durable fighter? He's 19 and all. He's durable. Spilska fight was an ugly fight. I don't think he won that fight right away. He did. I mean, the last time he looked good, he, he fought. Fedorosa? Uh, Fedoros? No. Lakovic. Um, Lakovic. That's where he looked. The last time he looked good to me. But that fight, he put punches together. That's probably why mm-hmm. as well. More. Yeah. Yeah, he put punches together. For but Lakovic is a bigger man than those two other guys. Mm hmm. Do you think he fights better against bigger guys? Well, Lakovic, again, you can't. Who can you compare to Latimer Klitschko? You just can't, can you? Certainly not. You know, that's hard to compare those guys. Because this guy can box, he can punch, he's athletic, and he's ring smart, he's ring intelligence. He's a hardened veteran. Footwork. Latimer. Hands down. Hands down. He hands down. Latimer's footwork is better than, than Brian's footwork. Latimer is like the Cinderella man next to Brian. Defense. And that foot. I think Clisco. Who hits him? Nobody hits him. Chin. We don't know what Brian could take. Brian hasn't been hit. I haven't seen Brian Rock yet. I saw him got dropped by Bowie Tapu. Yeah, Tapu, yeah, but that was way back when. You know, that was way back when. So you don't count that as anything? No, nah, that was, he was green then. You know, I, I, I dismissed that. The Perez fight? Perez fight was, Perez was getting to him a little bit though. Perez could punch. Yeah, he could punch. Perez could punch. Just, you know, I think that they made a mistake with Perez taking him out to uh, Garcia's gym. You know, Garcia, you know, they, you, you get these guys, they train a little fighter, and they think they can train a heavyweight. Training heavyweights and cruiserweights is far different from training any other weight class in the divisions. You understand? Know you can't apply the same tactics the cruiserweights and heavyweights that you do with featherweights and welterweights and middleweights. You understand? It's a different, it's a different horse. The application is, has to be a little more subtle, you know, a little more toned down. You can't just go in there, you know, Paris, so they got him out there with you. Huh? Paris is from trainer to trainer to trainer. He was with, I think it was, wasn't yeah. he with Abel Sanchez? Yeah. Then he moved. I trained him for, I trained him for one fight. You as well? Uh, Adam Booth? Now he's moved over to Garcia, Garcia. Yeah, out in California. But I didn't. I, I I think Booth was half the reason why he lost the fight. To be honest. Yeah. Because Booth was telling him to relax, chill out, be cool. Yeah. yeah. I'd even tell him go and knock the guy out. Yeah. Take it to yeah. him and knock him out. Stop holding. Get out there and stop him. Yeah. But he was just telling him relax, cool, just just. Yeah. No. Don't worry about it. You're losing the fight. You're already just, just taking like a man. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Booth is a joke to me. Oh, Adam Booth is a joke. And to me, so, I mean, he's a philosopher, not a trainer. <laughs> well, he's, he's, he's got Andy Lee, the uh, middleweight champion yeah, of the world. Yeah, so. yeah. Mhm. Mhm. So. Yeah, that's good. It's good. He, he, David Hay exits and Andy Lee comes in. So. <laughs> it's just, it's, I mean, you know, it's really, it's really funny to me. So but, you know, that's how. I mean, overall, this fight you say he finishes in six. So we talked about the first round. We talked about what else. So you say within six. Is that because Klitschko tie, uh, um, Jennings tires and Klitschko gets a hold of his man and his man has nowhere to run or what? No, I just think those bombs that he's going to get hit with is going to wear him out. He's going to get hit with some bombs. 
Klitschko is punching hard. He's crisp. You know, he's quick. His hands and feet are quick. I think he's going to get hit with some some clean bombs in that fight. It's going to take the take the win out of the sails. With a small ring, what does that make? With having a smaller ring, what does that do to two fighters? Uh, it makes them fight more. It makes them have more urgency. You know, to strike first and not, you know, get in trouble by waiting around. A lot of people are saying that if Jennings fights the way he started against Perez, he gets wiped out because he started way too slow. I think he's going to get hit hard early. That's got to be the yeah. plan. Discourage him. Get out there, hit him early. Make Discourage him and don't let him get any bright ideas of getting any confidence into the fight. But that's why, if I were heavyweight champion of the world, I'd be saying, "Look, I'm bigger than you." Like I said, outwardly, he's seems to be into the fight, but we won't be able to tell exactly what he's thinking, what he's feeling, until he gets survives those early early rounds. Until we see him eat something. Once we see him eat something, we say, "Okay, he's, he's, this is going to be a long fight." But I could tell how he responds to those first early punches, what's going to happen. But there's nothing else you've seen so far in the training camp, in the lead-up to this fight, that makes you think, mm, this guy will go in a couple of rounds, or anything like that. Like I said, he's got to keep on a brave face. So he's going to have to take something, you know. He's going to have to show his worth in this fight. But I think that Latimer catches up to him inside of seven rounds and can get him. If Vladimir doesn't get him out of out of there in seven rounds and the fight goes in the second half of the fight. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not even concerned about that. If it goes in the second half of the fight, Vladimir will be just as good because I told you, this, this man puts in a lot of rounds in a spawn camp. I, in, fact, in fact, I always question myself. I say, who does this? Who does this? I've been in numerous training camps for years. But who does this? Who does 12 to 15 rounds a day? Who does this? Klitschko. 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 The average boxer doesn't want to box eight rounds. Not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They think, well, come on, man. You, you gonna, and, the, and the first thing they say, man, you're going to overtrain me or <laughs> I don't want to do this here. You know, they always got an excuse. And then they want to come out the ring. Come on, let's do the pass. Or let's do the ring. Ro or do the heavy bat. But I said, why do we have to hit the pads in a heavy bag? And I just had a human being in there for you to hit. It doesn't make sense. We can stand there and get 12 to 15 rounds of boxing, but you want to come out and hit pads in, in the heavy bag. I mean, think about what you're saying here. It does not make sense. You know, you need to get in the ring and box. Box two, three different people. That will get your stamina up. That will get your eyes sharp. Get your, hand shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's better than another human being trying to hit you and you trying to hit him? And get your chin ready as well. <laughs> yeah. Please. You know, you can't. Yeah, it's, it's no getting around it. <laughs> there isn't. It's no. Now, let, let, let's, let's kind of focus as, as I come to you in this interview review. Just closing on Vladimir Klitschko. Back in America. What does it make? How do you feel being back in America with the champ? I feel great. I feel, it feels good to be back. I think that the American public, boxing fans, that is, I think they deserve to see the heavyweight champion of the world. I think they deserve to see who and what he is. Uh, Evander said something the other day. He said, Vladimir Klitschko has got to put his heart and his hand in this fight and show the American public who and what he is. And I agree with that. So this is his opportunity. He's back. He's on HBO. He's got to put his heart in his hand, step in that ring, be it as it may, small 18 ring. 18, 18 feet was pretty good, a big ring, though. Because next step, step up is 20 feet. So 18 is not that bad. It would have been really bad for 16 and a half or 17. And people say, oh, that's only a couple of inches. Well, yeah, but those couple of inches can make the difference in a, in a fight and how the fight is for. Um, I'm agree in agreement with Evander. Evander said that you got to put your heart in your hand and step up and show the people what you made out of who you are, you know, 
and how great you are. So this is an opportunity. What, what better stage to be on than HBO? You know, HBO is the premier station, along with uh, the Showtime, uh, to show your 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 worth. You know, and I I think that. Him stepping into this fight against an undefeated fighter in Bryant Jennings, it's his opportunity. Uh, Fred said that, you know, that that Jonathan Banks just assumed the position of Emmanuel Stewart. You know, as as per Emmanuel wished. Uh, but Banks was trained by Emmanuel also, and I think that, you know, Latterman took made the choice because he knew that Jonathan would train him in the mode that he was trained in by Emmanuel Stewart. And that's probably why he chose uh, Banks over me, because he knew I wasn't going to do it. I wasn't th- th- I'm going to train him the way Emmanuel Stewart trained him. I was going to train him the way that James Bashir trains boxers. So, you know, that's why he, he chose Jonathan Banks because he was used to the Kronk style and that he chose Jonathan Banks to carry that Kronk tradition on. So we won't know what Jonathan will do until confronted with a crisis. Hopefully we won't get confronted with a crisis. And uh, if that happens, I'm sure that he'll be able to, be, uh, to handle the crisis. Would he turn to because you as a crisis, or would he get on with it himself? I think he'll handle himself because he's been he's been in ring he's been in the ring before he's he's boxed before. Jonathan's got over twenty professional fights, so he has to apply that rule of thought as though he was to fight in that ring. So he's been on both sides of the fence. He's been a, a, a trainer now, now. He's been a boxer and now. He's a young trainer. This is his first assignment. Which is a very heavy assignment, being the trainer for the heavyweight championship, uh, heavyweight champion of the world, and your first effort as a trainer. But, it, it's it's just never been done before, I but, don't think. But but he's got a, he's got a, he's got a well oiled tank. He's got a well oiled machine, well oiled machine. Yes, yeah, so well oiled machine. Just wind up and let it go, and you just watch it. But what happens if that machine starts to malfunction, like literally malfunction? You, I mean, you you didn't put it together. So when it starts going right. wrong, how are you going to fix it? That's something that we. That's a question that I hope that we never have to try to answer. You know, it's a very viable question, but yeah. uh, it's one that I hope that we're never confronted with. You know, one that you know. I, I like I said, he, this is his first uh, time at back. Yeah. So everybody's in a wait and see mode. We just hope that we never have to get into a predicament where he has to press any panic buttons up in the corner. Plus, Vitaly is in the corner with him. The yeah, that's, uh, the that's brother. a sure thing. You know? But he's another uh, one. He's, Vitaly's never been knocked out or knocked down, has he? So what's he going to talk right. about? Right. <laughs> so, right. I mean, well, you got, won, Jonathan Banks, you got Jonathan Banks there, you got Vitaly Klitschko there. So between the two of them, I'm sure they can get him through the fight. If need be. If need be. I think Jonathan might be able to guide him through the fight itself. But if need be, you know, uh, Vitaly is there, so they, it's, they should sail through uncharted waters. Okay. Um, two other things. Walking to the ring, holding the belt as you're walking to the ring, and that, that theme tune uh, of Vladimir Klitschko, which is so amazing. Um, what does it feel like walking to the ring with the champion? What's that feeling like? Loads of the crowd cheering for the champ. You're you're all dressed in red as the Klitschko camp, and you're walking out to defend another another championship in another it's, championship. It's, a, it's an awesome feeling. It's an awesome feeling. You know, so many times in my in my career as a boxing trainer, I've gone to the ring with with designated losers. <laughs> You know, they were. You know, that's that's what it was. I, I came up that I came up in boxing the hard way, and these guys were designated losers. Many of them, they were not because they didn't have the ability, but because they didn't have the desire and the courage 
They were just there for the money. Right. You know, my mission is to make this money, and I don't care about, you know, the pride for far. So having been with Vladimir Klitschko for the last 12 years, October will be 12 years, uh, it's, it's a very awesome feeling because I'm, I'm, I'm with a guy that's, I'm, I'm here to win. I'm here to win. I'm here to go through the adversity. You know, the Sam Peter fight showed that I can go through adversity. Peter knocked him down three times. He got up to win. And in the end, nearly knocked out Samuel Peter. So right then and there, I said, this guy, this, 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 this young man is a fighter. Because he had to collect himself. He was hurt going down those three times. And he got up to win. And in the end, he was the guy that looked at fresh, strong, and was boxing and moving and hurt Samuel in that, in that last round. So, yeah, it's an awesome feeling to be with the, with the champion. You, the champion is not the guy that has the belt. The champion is the one that wants to be there, the one that's going to do the work, the one that's going to say, I'm going to go through it. I have to go through to win this fight. So, yeah, it's an awesome feeling, and I'm proud to be with him, you know? Wow. I'm the senior guy in that camp, you know? So it's a particular pride to me to be with a guy out there that's going to endure, and he's going to fight to the end. He's going to fight. It's it's a special it's a special kind of feeling, you know. I know. But I feel, I feel the pressure. I feel the pressure. I'm so into what I'm doing, and I'm so into the boxer that I feel the pressure. I feel what he's doing. All that time that's between him and that bell ringing, I feel it. Usually, you, you talk know? about fights and excitement about fights, or not being excited about fights. Are you excited about this fight? Are you not interested in this fight? I'm always excited about. Vladimir Klitschko's fights. Uh, P- was it because Pianetti? Because now it's legacy. Now it's legacy. But Pianetti, legacy. What, you weren't interested in the Pianetta fight. You said to me, why are you watching Pianetta? This is a boring fight. What are you watching Pianetta for? Yeah, because I had, I mean, I couldn't get excited about it. I, I was being truthful about it, you know. Even Vladimir questioned me about it. And I told him, I said, look, I'm, I'm excited to see your career turn another page. But this this guy doesn't light my fire at all. <laughs> but this fight, what does this fight do for you? Does it light your fire or not? He's an undefeated American fighter. He's brought us back to America. Right. And Brian's been popping off a little, so he makes me think that, hey, maybe this guy's going to fight. Maybe he's going to fight. I think he's a bit green, but nonetheless, he's undefeated. And, I've, and I'm made to respect that like everybody should. I think this is about the seventh or eighth guy that Vladimir has faced in his career that was undefeated. But most of the guys that he has faced that was undefeated, where are they now? That's that's the story. Where are they now? It's a good point. Calvin Brock, Sultani Brigamov, you know, Chagayev, who is is up in Russia now, but Chagayev, he was, I mean, a lot of guys was undefeated when they WBA, first he's faced Vladimir. Well, he's got that, that fringe WBA title belt. Yeah, yeah. But Latimer won a WBA belt from Chigayev. And Chigayev, now they made, the WBA has made Latimer the super champion. And Latimer discarded the, the old belt and the, they gave it back to Chigayev. A guy that Latimer knocked out for the title. So you figure that out. You know, you figure that, that out. People you know, are comparing, so it, in terms of athleticism, people are comparing the David Hay fight with Bryant Jennings in terms of the athleticism and all that stuff. What do you think? Are, are there comparisons there? David Hay was a survivalist in that fight. David Hay was doing just enough not to get knocked out. He never did get into a fight with Latimer Quisco. He did just enough not to get knocked out in the fight. You know? Um, that's a good fight. David Hay and, and Jennings, that's a good fight. You know? That's a, good that's fight, a yeah. really good fight. I would like to observe a fight like that. But I think that Jennings is going to fight differently from David. David seemed to be interested in going the distance and not getting hurt in the process. You know, uh, Jennings is going to try. 
I know he's going to try those first three rounds. I expect him to try those first three rounds until he starts getting hit. And once he starts getting hit, he'll have to come up with another formula to try to lift the belt. One final sure question. He will. One one final question. We've talked about size. We've talked about height, reach, ring, the power of Bryant Jennings. Does he have the power to hurt your man? He's a heavyweight, and depending on how the punch is delivered, yeah, he can hurt anybody. He can hurt my man. You know, he, he has a. He has a kind of body uh, stature, long arms, you know, and uh, he could throw some punches and, and uh, hurt anybody, I believe. Because a lot of people across social media say, Jennings, he's not a puncher, he can't punch, you know. So, as an experienced trainer, I've got to ask you the question because... You know, he's a heavyweight, you know, and at any given time, you know, a guy can hurt you. Is there such thing as a non-punching heavyweight? Jimmy Young. If you look back on Jimmy Young, he wasn't a big puncher. When you say punches, you mean to sleep with one shot. Right. You know, and um, there are not a lot of guys around like that. You know, the guys that get people out of there, they do it over the attrition of a fight. They're uh, building up, busting guys up, busting them up, cut them in the mouth, cut them in the eyes, hurt them here and there, and that uh, gives them the TKO. But Latimer in his last fight with uh, Pulev, he knocked him out. That last knockdown, his head his head got off of the canvas. That's all that got off the canvas. His body was flat on the floor. He couldn't get his body up. Um, I believe Latimer has uh, 52, 53 knockouts. That's a lot of knockouts for a heavyweight. That's every indication that this guy is a puncher through and through. I think Brian's got what, 12, 13 knockouts? Yeah. 19 fights so and the people and he's never knocked out top caliber fighters but those guys uh, let's see Spilka he knocked out uh, no he, he didn't knock out Spilka he stopped him he stopped him yeah stopped him in the 10th knocked him through the ropes dropped him and knocked him through the ropes in, in the 10th oh okay I thought I, would, I was there at the fight and I may, thought but maybe it went the distance no he stopped him Tenth round, okay. put him through the ropes. Um, he didn't stop Perez, but he hurt Perez. And Perez drawed him a couple of times too. Mm -hmm. That's why I said he didn't win the Perez fight running away. No. It was a tit for tat in that fight, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, Spilka, I think Spilka got knocked out because of his own recklessness. <laughs> trying to bully Bryant, you know, running into stuff, you know, and he got ran out of gas a little bit and got taxed out of there. That's exactly what happened to him. Yeah. Trying to be a tough guy and running in. Bryant said, okay, just keep coming. I'll just keep punching. Keep coming. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Stay right there, right there, right there, right there. <laughs> and and the buildup and the attrition is what took him out. He, he was definitely. I, I was. I kept thinking this fight went the distance. No, he got stopped. He got, he, said he got put for the ropes. I remember him getting hit with a body shot, getting dropped, and then yeah. Jen put him for the ropes. Yeah. So, Uncle Bashir, thank you so much again. Um, I wish Team Klitschko all the best tomorrow night. Um, I'm looking forward to the fight. Um, you know where my. You know where I'm at. Um, yeah. I know where you're at, so. Okay, just uh, keep something, keep a pillow or something on the floor, so when you faint, when Brian hit the floor, you hit the floor. The same <laughs> time, you know, hurt yourself. <laughs> Put some pillows down there so you're, you're landing on the floor, be soft, you know.
because our guide means business. Vladimir Klitschko wants to shut up Fred Jenkins. So Fred Jenkins single-handedly put the wood on his fire because he was saying some insulting things to, well, Vladimir perceived it to be insulting. And uh, Vladimir uh, doesn't like it. And I say, yeah, keep talking. It's good for us. Because he wants to get out there. He wants to shut Fred Jenkins up. That's his goal. He's going, he's, he wants to fr- shut Fred up, you know. Fred said that Latimer makes some embarrassing mistakes. And Latimer says, okay, we'll see. We'll see. But, uh, but, but why, why does Fred say this? Why, Fred is an experienced trainer. Why does he say that? He's uh, trying. He's, he's using the, the, the most common uh, tactic in the world. He's trying to get into the fighter's head and Vladimir is like saying, what mistakes? Well, Jonathan Banks at the press conference said it best. You know, what he got, he says, every human being and certainly every fighter makes mistakes. None of us are mistakes free. So that was the good thing that he said. You know, he said that he's making an embarrassing mistake. Wow. He's got 17 tower defenses, and Fred Jenkins, out of everybody else, notice how many mistakes we make? Wow, that's really deep. You know? 17 tower defenses, 52 knockouts, and you just realize that we make mistakes? Wow, that's really heavy, man. I don't think that's going to make a difference when that bell rings. I just, I can't wait for the bell. I just can't wait. I'm, I want the bell to ring right now. <laughs> you ready to go? I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go, man. I want to see this fight. You are, you're interested in it then? You are interested? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm on, I mean, you know, Brian's, Brian's is, is, he's talk to talk. I want to see him if he can walk to walk. I want, I'll give him his props if he does. I'm just saying, not likely. After he gets hit, Klitschko came in at a lean 240. Ah, I forgot to, but he came in at a lean 240 somewhere around there. He's ready to box. He's ready to box, it. and he went in the gym today and did a full workout, a full workout. You know, that's the way he does things. Who else? Most fighters want to rest the day. Before the fight, Klitschko goes in the gym and does his work. The full two and a half, three hours. The consummate pro. Skipping the rope. You know what I'm saying? He's dancing around the ring three, four rounds. You know what I'm saying? He's building up a he sweat. I mean, so much sweat that he, he had to take off three pounds in the gym, four pounds in the gym. Everything was wet. Shirt, pants, everything. He's wet. And he loves it. He loves it. Come back, you know, skip the rope. He's dancing around the ring. He's doing the speed back. He's doing the head back. He's just moving and grooving. He said, this camp is, is over and let's fight. You know, this camp is over and let's get ready to fight now. I want to fight. You know, he's. I want to get in and I want to make contact. That's what he said tonight. When it, He said, that was the last round I'm going to do until I get in the ring. I want, I'm anxious to put those gloves on, and I want to make contact. He said, let's hope that Brian Jennings is there to fight because I feel like fighting. And I'm confident he's ready to go. Well, I think a lot of Klitschko fans are going to be, are going to be excited, and a lot of Jennings fans are going to be excited because they're expecting a big fight. Well, we're in the garden. Let's see what happens. We're in the mecca of, of, of boxing at the Madison Square Garden. Let's see what happens.